Welcome to part three of uh, the HMS SU build-up. Um, we've done all of the work now in getting rid of the um, uh, little parts of uh, masking tape uh, that were on the ship. It was uh, quite a difficult job to do actually, uh, if I'm to be fair. Um, couldn't take them off with a knife, um, couldn't take them off with the uh, toothpick uh, so I ended up dunking the whole thing in uh, a, a bowl of warmish water um, which did help get rid of the um, the masking tape the only problem is what's happened is um, the front hoop has uh, gone missing off the front of the ship there and I don't know where that is because it's such a small part It's you, you can't really see it um, I also had to take off um, uh, the planes and also uh, the rudder at the rear of the ship as well. Um, the only problem with this, what's happened, is it scratched the surface all over. So if you look down there, you can see a lot of scratches down there and also down across there and across the conning tower there um, and also on the top and had some problems on the side there as well and down there as well uh, and if I'm to be honest the actual pattern that it come out with um, I'm not really too happy with anyway I mean I know I was going to um, go over the whole ship with a light coat of uh, flat black just to bring everything back in again but uh, I don't think that's actually going to work on that to be fair so I think the thing that I'm going to need to do now is put this in a bath of Mr. Muscle's oven cleaner to get rid of the paint uh, once that off give it a good clean and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it flat black again uh, but rather than doing all the masking again because this took sort of eight nine days to do uh, on the masking uh, and I'm not going to put myself through that again to be for sure um, so I think what I'm going to do is just do it in flat black um, and then seal it put the decals on uh, seal the decals in and then once I've done that I'm going to go in and uh, do the weathering on it from that point it's a shame that this didn't work out as uh, well as I was hoping it was going to but uh, there's nothing that you can really do about that to be fair uh, sometimes these things just don't work out and you need to adapt and learn uh, how to do things differently um, so yeah I'm going to do that get this uh, done whilst I'm doing that as well I'm just going to make a little bit of a start on the uh, the HMS Daring as well I think um, there's a few bits on that that I can actually do that won't be too involving um, so as soon as I've got this back to wherever it needs to be I will come back to you We've stripped the uh, submarine right back to the bare plastic. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a wee bit of an issue with <laughs> this now. Um, I've actually misplaced the rudder that goes at the back and the uh, two planes at the front. Um, and I've been searching for them high and low and I cannot find them at all anywhere. They've just mysteriously disappeared into the middle of nowhere. Um, I would imagine there is a kind of a, a, a Bermuda Triangle type thing for, for plastic parts from kits. Um, if I knew that where that place was I'd be rummaging around to see if I could find them. Um, so I, yeah, I can't find them which is a shame. Um, which now means that I'm going to have to buy another uh, HMS Astute model kit um, which is not something that I really wanted to do however um, they're only about £15 so it's not too much of a problem to actually order one it's just a case of now waiting for it to come in um, so I'm going to get that ordered fairly soon well I'll, I'll get that ordered today um, and then just wait for it to come in um, that's the only thing I can do um, I can't really do anything with this now until such time that that has come in I can't even try and sort out the seascape because I do need to get like the bow waves sorted out on this once I've got the bow waves sorted out on either side then I know 
uh, the approximate height that I need to base. Um, and then once that's done, then it's just a case of um, after that, just making sure that everything's um, on an even keel. Um, so when I pour in the uh, the deep clear water, it does actually um, stay in there and is is completely level. Um, so I'm going to have to put this, unfortunately, and this is, seems to be happening to me quite a bit just recently. I don't know why, but I'm just going to need to put that on the back burner for the moment. And um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some work to um, the uh, the uh, Type 45 destroyer that I've got. Um, it's kit by a fix, so I'm just going to start working on that. There's uh, some work that I can do. Um, unfortunately I can't do any painting on it because I need the paints for it um, and I haven't actually got around to ordering those yet because I was just concentrating on this so um, the only thing I can really do is is just start getting all of the uh, the photo wedge parts sorted out for the hangar bay um, and also for the uh, the torpedoes etc and get those bits all, all, all sorted um, and I now well, maybe we'll be able to get quite a bit of the superstructure sorted out. I don't know, um, but we're, uh, we're we'll move on to that. See what I can do, and then um, we'll take it from there. So uh, yeah, that's going to be about it for the moment. Um, I will come back to you um, once um, I've got another astute kit, and it's up to the point where it was before. Um, so I will. Uh, well, what's going to be? <laughs> uh, uh, a week or so for me is uh, going to be a second well less than a second for you guys um, so I will catch you later um, during this build so this is the uh, the replacement kit for uh, the one uh, where I lost a number of bits on it after I uh, tried to um, strip all the paint off unfortunately I lost the parts on that um, and I decided really in the end not to go for the tiled effect because, uh, well, it was just uh, taking too long and, and, and the effect weren't that good. Um, well, this one, um, I just decided to uh, put a couple of layers of the uh, Tamiya XF85, which is the black rubber on it. Um, so I've done that, got it nice and smooth. Um, then I added uh, a layer of the uh, Humbrol acrylic varnish. Um, let that dry, put the uh, the decals on it that needed to be on there um, and then put another couple of layers of uh, the uh, Humbrol acrylic, yeah, acrylic varnish over the top of that and what that's basically done is turn some of the areas on this uh, submarine to an absolute grey I mean it's done it almost to a well what's I think what's called a NATO black um, uh, it almost looks like a NATO black to me um, on there even though I've not touched it uh, and then in some other areas it looks as though it, the paint looks really really rough when actually it's really really smooth um, so I'm not sure what the hell has happened there but there's obviously been some kind of chemical reaction one that I've never had before um, when putting these two kits to, or when putting um, Tamiya paints uh, together with uh, the uh, Humbrol acrylic varnish uh, so I've got no idea what's gone on there uh, to be fair um, one thing's for sure I am not going to be putting this in a bath of um, uh, sort of paint stripper the reason being is because there are very small delicate pieces on here that are going to get lost again if I do that um, and I don't really fancy shelling out even more money uh, to get another kit. Um, so really what I'm going to have to do is try and come up with a way of um, trying to get rid of most of that grey um, without actually sort of painting the ship too much or painting the submarine too much. Or, or you know without using neat paints on it um, I'm kind of thinking uh, about using a wash um, just to see if I can actually get rid of it and if it does work that would be great um, it will actually then kind of fall in line with, with what I'm looking for but yeah I mean certainly 
uh, somewhere down here doesn't really matter so much because most of this is going to be underwater anyway and you're not going to be able to see it like the uh, the planes at the back there you're not going to be able to see those but you've got this massive area of grey around here um, and also around there that's that's going to be seen and there's some around there obviously all down there across there um, and if we turn it around it's just as bad if not even worse on that side so again some of this is actually going to be underwater so it doesn't really matter so much I don't have to concentrate so much on that but certainly the end of the planes etc you know at the front where they are going to be out of water that's where I kind of need to need to concentrate on um, so yeah massively big pain in the bum and also those two decals that were there um, I haven't come out in the right place but never mind um, so yeah I don't know I don't know what's been going on there I really don't it's I mean it it looks quite rough the paintwork on this actually does look quite rough um, but it actually isn't so I uh, no idea what what's going on there um, I mean the kit was actually washed before anything was done to it you know done all the usual prep work etc um, so yeah not really too sure the only thing that I can think of maybe is the fact that um, uh, maybe I didn't um, uh, shake the can of the uh, Humber acrylic varnish um, that well, but you know, I spent a good sort of like five minutes shaking it, so I would have thought it would have been, um, I would have thought it would have actually been um, properly mixed. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna have to see what I can do with this and um, see what kind of, uh, see how we can repair it again, because most of this is actually underwater. Is it's kind of really from the planes there, sort of across there where it's gonna be. Um, underwater so not going to see the front I mean the front actually does look quite shiny some from from some views um, which is a bit weird um, so yeah let's just see uh, what we can do to uh, try and rescue this um, Paul sorry excuse um, so I'll be back um, when I've uh, done some more work to it so I've been doing a bit more work on um, the sub and it's not looking too bad actually now we've given it a semi semi gloss coat um, as I like to refer to it um, I've done some light weathering on it um, most of it can't really be seen unless you actually look at it properly um, but it's not looking too bad um, and that's how it's just going to be left I think to be fair I don't want to go sort of like totally overboard with it um, the next thing to do is um, put it in this, the glue on that side has actually dried now, it's just tacky. Um, so the next thing for me to do now is um, just get the sub in here um, and then put the bow waves around the front of it where I need uh, around the front of this of the sub here we just need the bow waves built up around the side so I'm just going to use the um, I think it's called the wave water wave um, so I'm just going to use that to build up the bow waves on the front and sort of like um, down the sides as well a little bit uh, try and get those sculpted uh, as, as best as we can um, once we've got that done and that's dried um, then I can go ahead and pour the um, the realistic water in there. Um, not sure how that's going to go, but hopefully it'll be uh, good enough. I mean, according to the measurements that I've taken of this, um, I've gone onto the Woodland Scenics website uh, because they do have the uh, the estimator on there. All you do is you you tap in uh, tap in the 